Hey guys, it's Connie from Connie's Wigging Out. Hey, I wanted to talk today a little about COVID-19. Um, I wanted to talk a little about it before I get into this uh, wig review on the wig I have on right now because I feel like it's an important topic. Um, for the last five weeks, I have been off and on sick. I have had congestion, um, sore throat, coughing, um, some muscle aches, some fatigue, uh, no fever, go figure with that, no fever, um, but I've had all these symptoms off and on. So during the five week period, did I have COVID? <laughs> um, yes, I did. I don't know when I got it. I don't know how I got it. Um, and as it turns out, my whole family ended up getting it. Um, I was tested on December 3rd when I finally had just had enough of off and on feeling bad and went to urgent care and she diagnosed me with bronchitis, gave me um, a steroid and antibiotic and I said, you know, should we just do a test just as a precaution and she said, yeah, let's do it and um, lo and behold. I tested positive. So I want to express my point. If you feel like you just have a cold, because I'm thinking for a lot of people, COVID-19 just feels like a cold. But I think for a lot of people, we just think, oh, that's not COVID because COVID is so much more serious and, um, it's got to just be a cold. And I thought I had an upper respiratory infection, which is rare for me. I don't normally have those. Um, and so, you know, that kind of sent up a little bell that, you know, maybe I should go get tested. Um, but basically, really, more than anything, I just wanted to feel better. And because mine wasn't constant, um, it seems like everybody that I've, everything I've read and, and everybody, if you, you feel like, oh, if I get COVID, that means that I'm sick and I'm sick for 10 to 14 days straight. Um, that wasn't the case for me. So I think that everybody should look at this as a case by case basis. And if you start experiencing any of those symptoms, um, you should definitely get tested because you're probably infecting uh, your family members, um, you know, any friends that you see. If you think that something's off about the way that you're feeling and even if it just feels like a cold, my husband, um, that's what he has said so far, that it's just like he has a really bad cold. And he's said he's actually had much worse colds than this. So um, thank God that his body is reacting okay and handling uh, this dreaded virus. Um, the reason I wanted to speak on this is because it all ties together. The reason that I wear wigs is because I have two autoimmune diseases. I have lupus and I have Sjogren's syndrome. Both of these autoimmune diseases are pretty dangerous. Um, I've been very fortunate with only experiencing um, fatigue. I get tired easy. Um, I get a lot of rashes on my body. They're not pretty. They 
itch like you have just never itched in your life. Like it, it's, it's, it's an itch that I can't explain to any living soul. Um, you want to scratch yourself down to your bones. And so when you're doing all of that, of course, you are bruising your, your skin, you're bruising your body. Um, you're, you're, you're scratching so hard that you're scratching sores into your skin, which form scabs. I am a member of Facebook pages for people with lupus and people with Sjogren's syndrome. And there are thousands of people who suffer much, much more than me. Um, autoimmune diseases can be really scary and people don't realize it because, you know, people see you and they go, oh, well, she's fine. There's nothing wrong with her. But the simple fact is, I don't know every single day what's going on on the inside of my body. My own body can attack any one of my major organs at any given time on any day. And you just have to live with that, knowing that that can happen. And I do take uh, hydroxychloroquine, which um, in the beginning, they thought that was going to be really helpful for COVID-19 um, patients. And they're, they're trying to make the right calls um, on everything. I hope the vaccine works. And I hope people stop dying and people stop getting sick. It is no joke. Uh, there were a couple of times in the last couple of weeks that I probably should have gone to the hospital. Um, there was so much chest pressure and trouble breathing and um, a lot of crying. <laughs> and it, I don't know. But but on other days I was I was able to go to work. I don't know. It's it's so it's so strange. It's been really strange for me. Maybe the hydroxychloroquine that I've been on, maybe it was maybe it was helping. Maybe it was helping to um, fight it along the way. I don't know. But I just want to say for people that have disabilities, autoimmune diseases, heart conditions, um, diabetes, please don't be mad at them if, you know, they park in a handicapped space and they get out and they walk to a door and they look perfectly fine because you don't know what's going on in that person's life. You don't know what medical traumas they deal with every day. There are people with lupus who cannot roll out of bed. They're so weak. Their immune system is so bad. They can't get out of bed. They're sick constantly. Uh, people with Sjogren's syndrome, they have extreme dry eye. They, they, they can't see. Sometimes they can't drive. Um, their eyes are swollen. They're red. They're itchy. And, you know, a lot of this stuff sounds kind of minor, but all of this stuff adds up to what could be a disaster in your life. And you could be hospitalized for any number of reasons. Um, people whose fingers turn blue um, Raynaud's disease, I think it's called, um, they lose feeling in their, in their fingers. Um, I think scleroderma is, is a horrible autoimmune disease. Um, I had a friend recently who ultimately passed away from that disease. Um, she fought really hard for many years. She had a lot of surgeries and I think finally her lungs just couldn't breathe. She just couldn't breathe anymore. Please, 
be heartfelt for those people and um, know that they might be suffering on the inside a lot more than they look like they're suffering on the outside. So with that said, um, I'm recovering. I feel much better today. Today is the first day in probably um, a week or two that I have actually been motivated to do something. I was motivated to um, put on a little bit of makeup. You know, I'm still bang. <laughs> And I motivated to um, put on a wig, which, by the way, this is my favorite, favorite, favorite Ellen Bella wig. Um, this is the hair that I've always wanted my entire life. And I've had some people, uh, some friends um, or family that may have said, um, you know, that one doesn't seem as natural looking on you as some of your other wigs, but it's very natural looking. It's very natural looking. Um, but they mean it's just not very natural looking on me because I've never had this hair in my life and I've never worn this type of hair. So, um, I think my other reviews that I have out there, I have um, pretty much straight wigs. <clears throat> that was my typical style before I started losing my hair to lupus or from lupus. Um, some people with lupus, their body attacks their hair follicles and the rashes that I was referring to earlier, um, were all in my scalp. Um, so I scratched and scratched and scratched. And and I know y'all are probably sitting back going, well, why'd you scratch, dummy? Well, because it's uncontrollable. Like, like you, your dermatologist can give you all kinds of creams and um, believe me, I've been through them all. I've been through them all. And it's just uncontrollable. I have very little, I have lots of bald spots. Um, what I do have, it feels like cotton candy. It's just a, a tangled web of cotton candy, um, spider web feeling. It's just, it's just, it doesn't feel good. Um, it doesn't look good to me. And, you know, my family tries to support me as much as they can. Um, I think they, for the most part, are just really not sure what to say, except for, I'm sorry. <laughs> um, so I think a lot of people are suffering in silence that have autoimmune diseases. Um, every once in a while, I'll get some concern from, um, you know, Maybe my best friend will ask how I'm feeling. Um, and I've had a couple of other friends who actually said, you know, on an occasion, how are you feeling? How are you doing? Uh, which is really nice. It's really appreciative. When you ask me that question, it doesn't mean I have to harp on it for 15 minutes like I'm doing right now. <laughs> but it's nice to know that they recognize that you do have a chronic disease that is not curable and that you will probably always have. Um, and, and that's a sad thing. But I'm going to live with it. I'm going to try to be positive about it. I am very thankful that my symptoms have not progressed to anything further. Um, I thank God for that every day. But in the meantime, I am going to wear this hair. Ellen Villa's touch wig is a long, um, 
low, low, low permatees. Um, I told y'all that I'm catering to low permatees. This is your girl. If you want, I'm telling you, this is your, this is my, this is probably my favorite wig of every wig I own. Wig is the only wig that I can put on my head. Just put it on. And super light density, very light density. I also just bought another one in a different color. So when I finish out the video and move into some better lighting, I'm going to do a color comparison and let you look at both of those. And then also the new one that I just got, um, I have not trimmed it. So we'll be able to see the difference in the longer new one and this one that I trimmed. I, but it is my favorite. I can pop this wig on. I don't have to hairspray it. I don't have to worry about the lace front. The cap fits me perfectly. It stays out of my face. I mean, it, I love the way it comes down straight and it has this little bang that swoops and then you just have a little bit of curl on the ends and the side just to give it just enough body, scoot up a little bit, just enough body to look like I just took a curling iron and just put some little waves in it. It's just super cute. Super, super, super cute. Um, you can put this wig behind your ears. Easily. That's how low density this is. You can put... You can fluff her if you want to. I'll fluff her. You know me, I'm not crazy about fluffy wigs, at least on me, but you can fluff her. I don't know. It's hard. Um, it's hard, you know, because when you go out and, and you're in this wig, um, believe it or not, you, you feel okay around strangers because strangers don't know you and they don't know, um, what you look like before you had on a wig or after you had on a wig. Um, it's the people that you know and the people that you love. And you just hope and pray that they are there to support you. And they're not going to understand. It, it's Nobody's ever going to understand until they walk in your shoes. Um, people with alopecia. People with um, just any other hair loss issue. Um, I know a lot of people have hormone issues that made them lose their hair. Lots of alopecia patients and, and lupus patients like me. And I'm sure there's many, many, many other reasons why people lost their hair. Um, cancer patients who have to undergo chemo and they lose all their hair and they're completely bald and wigs are amazing they're amazing they really give you a lot more self-esteem they make you feel um just put together you know when you get ready to go to work or you get ready to go on a date you, you don't want to go with, with bald spots in your head and you don't want to put on a hat. Although I do love my hats, but I love them on my little wig pieces. Like in my first video. But I know I've drawn this out. Um, I'm going to move us into some better lighting so I can continue the review um, on this Ellen Villa Touch wig. 